Sampath, Assistant Professor in the School of Management, Bhavagrasi Das University. So today we are going to discuss the module one of the subject Essentials of IT. We will be discussing with the evolution, evolution of computers, with the components of computers, with the generations of computers, then computer languages and uh, all these uh, concepts in today's class. So let's start with what is a computer? Well, a computer is a programmable machine. The two principal characteristics of a computer are it responds to a specific set of instructions in a well-defined manner and it can execute a pre-recorded list of instructions or a program. See, the computer works on the basic principle of input process and output. We provide input to the computer and the computer processes the input and gives the final output. The output is displayed with the help of output devices connected to the computer like monitor, printer, speaker, these are the output devices. So, well, uh, modern computers are electronic and digital. Today we have electronic and digital computers. The actual machinery, wires, transistors and circuits are called the hardware. The instructions and data are called software. Components of computer, we are discussing the components of computer. We have memory, we have mass storage devices, we have input devices, we have output devices, we have center processing unit, CPU, then we have motherboard. So all these are the components of computer. Memory, memory enables a computer to store at least temporarily data and programs. Mass storage devices, this allows a computer to permanently retain large amounts of data. Common mass storage devices include memory, solid states, solid state drives, disk drives and tape drives. Input devices, well we all know the input devices, keyboard and mouse are the input devices. Uh, and the input device is the device through which data and instructions enter a computer. Output devices. An output device is a display screen, printer or other device that lets you see what the computer has accomplished. So finally, the computer processes the input and gives us the output and thus at that output is displayed with the help of output devices like a monitor, a display screen, a printer. So we get the output. CPU, CPU is the heart of the computer. This is the component that actually executes instructions. Motherboard, this component allows all the other components to communicate with one another. See all the hardware is attached to the computer with the motherboard only. Motherboard is you can understand it as a interconnection between various hardware. Okay, so we have CPU also on the motherboard. We have input devices connected to the motherboard. We have output devices connected to the motherboard. We have the basic circuitry, ICs, microprocessor, chips, all are embedded into the motherboard. Now coming to the history of computer, when was the first computer invented? The first mechanical computer was developed in the early 19th century by Charles Babbage, an English engineer, and Ada Lovelace, a mathematician. At the computer's core was a difference engine, which was responsible for making calculations using multiple sets of numbers printing the outputs. The first digital computer was the Atanas of Berry Computer. The ABC was developed in 1942 by Iowa State University professor John Vincent Atanasoff and graduate students Clifbury. So, the first digital computer was the ABC computer. It was developed in 1942 by two scientists, namely John Vincent Atanasoff and Clifbury. When was the first computer invented? This computer used, yes, the first computer used vacuum tubes to make binary computations and processed Boolean logic. However, the ABC lacked a CPU. There was no CPU with ABC computer and therefore it was not programmable. Subsequent computer evolutions added programming capabilities, RAM, transistors, microprocessors and portability as key characteristics. 
now there are six classifications of computers micro computers mini computers mainframe computers super computers workstation computers and servers see all these computers differ because of the computing power because of the processing capability because of the storage capacity so micro computer smaller in sizes used uh, used in various other all these types of computers are ha having different area of usage because they are having different capacity different computing power different processing power okay so obviously workstation supercomputer servers these are the highly dedicated computers meant for uh, commercial use meant for various uh, various complicated usage coming to the computer generations there are five generations of computers number one we have first generation computer evolved from the year 1940 to 1956 then came the second generation computer 1956 to 1963 then we have third generation computer from the year 1964 to year 1971 fourth generation computer year 1971 to present and fifth generation computer that what we have today present and in the coming future and beyond so we'll discuss each of these generations of computers one by one number one first generation computers the technology that was used in the first generation computer marked the usage of vacuum tubes the first generation of computer is characterized by the use of vacuum tubes and it was developed by the british engineer John Ambrose Fleming. A vacuum tube is an electronic device that is used to control the flow of electric current in a vacuum. It is used in CRT, also known as cathode ray tube, which is used in the TV, radio, etc. So, vacuum tubes were used, and it was basically the electron gun was inside the vacuum tube, and if the electron passes through the vacuum tube, the boolean logic 1 was there and if the electron does, did not pass then the boolean logic 0 was there. So this was the basic principle of the working of the first generation of computer. The first generation, first general purpose programmable electronic computer was the ENIAC, electronic numerical integrator and computer built by J. Presper Eckert and John V. Mockley at the University of Pennsylvania. The ENIAC was 30 to 50 feet long, 30 tons weighted, contained 18,000 vacuum tubes, 70,000 registers, and 10,000 capacitors, and it required 1,50,000 watt of electricity. So, this is what makes it very expensive. Advantages of the first generation computers, these computers were designed by using vacuum tubes, these generations computers were simple architecture these computers calculate data in milliseconds this computer is used for scientific purposes so these were the advantages of the first generation computers coming to the disadvantages the computer was very costly very large in size it takes up a lot of space and electricity the speed of these computers was very slow it is used for commercial purposes only. It is very expensive. These computers heat a lot. Cooling is needed to operate these computers because it heats up very quickly. Coming to the second generation of computers, transistors. The second generation of computers is characterized by the use of transistors. Yes, transistors was a new invention in the year 1956. And it was developed by three American physicists John Bardeen, Walter Brattain, and William Shockley. These were the three American physicists who invented transistors. And a transistor, if you look at what is a transistor, a transistor is a semiconductor device used to amplify or switch electronic signals or opens or close a circuit. It is invented in Bell Labs. The transistor become the key ingredient of all digital circuits, including computers. The invention of transistors replaced the bulky tubes from the first generation of computers. So, 
the second generation computer marked the use of transistors. If we look at the advantages of the second generation computers, it is smaller in size as compared to the first generation computer. It used a less electricity, it not heated as much as the first generation computer and it has better speed as compared to the first generation computers. If we look at the disadvantages, it is also costly and not versatile, still it is expensive for commercial purposes, cooling is still needed because it heated a lot. Punch cards were used for input, yes, we did not have any input devices at that time, so punch cards were used to give input to the computers. The computer is used for the particular purpose. These are the disadvantages. Coming to the third generation of computers. The third generation of computers marked the usage of integrated circuits. Integrated circuits, it is characterized by the use of IC. It was developed in 1958 by Jack Kilby. Yes, he was the person, Jack Kilby was the person who invented the IC. The integrated circuit is a set of electronic circuits on a small flat pieces of semiconductor that is normally known as silicon. The transistors were miniaturized and placed on silicon chips which are called semiconductors which drastically increase the efficiency and the speed of the computers. Third generation computers uh, use the ICs and ICs are also the chips. It has many transistors, resistors and capacitors built on a single slice of silicon. This development made computers smaller in size, low cost, large memory and processing. The speed of these computers is very high and it is efficient and reliable also. If we look at the advantages, these computers are smaller in size as compared to previous generations. It consumed less energy, was more reliable, more versatile, it produced less heat as compared to previous generations. These computers are used for commercial as well as general purpose. These computers used a fan for head discharge to prevent damage. This generation of computers has increased the storage capacity of computers. So these are the advantages. If you look at the disadvantages, still a cooling system is needed. It is still very costly. Sophisticated technology is required to manufacture integrated circuits. It is not easy to maintain the IC chips. The performance of these computers is degraded if we execute large applications. These are the disadvantages. Now coming to the fourth generation of computer. The fourth generation of computers is characterized by the use of microprocessors. Yes. It was invented in the 1970s and it is developed by four inventors named are Marcienhoff, Masatoshi Shima, Federico Fagin and Stanley Major. These are the four inventors to invent the microprocessor. The first microprocessor named was the Intel 4004 CPU. It was the first microprocessor that was invented. A microprocessor contains all the circuits required to perform arithmetic, logic and control functions on a single chip. Because of microprocessors, fourth generation computers include more data processing capacity than equivalent size third generation computers. Advantages of fourth generation computers, these computers are smaller in size and much more reliable as compared to other generations of the computer. The heating issue on these computers is almost negligible. No AC or air conditioner is required in a fourth generation computer. In these computers, all types of higher languages can be used in this generation. It is totally also for the general purpose. Less expensive, these computers are cheaper and also portable. Now we have some disadvantages also for the fourth generation computers. Fans are required to operate these kinds of computers. It required the latest technology for the need of making microprocessors and complex softwares. These computers were highly sophisticated. It also required advanced technology to make the ICs. So these are the disadvantages of fourth generation computers. Now discussing the fifth generation of computer. This is what we have today 
and in the coming future. These generations of computers were based on AI, artificial intelligence technology. Artificial intelligence technology is the branch of the computer science concerned with making computers behave like humans and allowing the computers to take its own decisions currently to take its own decisions. Currently, no computers exhibit full artificial intelligence. See, today we are uh, developing the concept of decision-making power to the computers. We are we want to give the decision-making power to the computer. This is what AI, artificial intelligence is all about. In the fifth generation of computers, VLSI technology and ULSI, ultra-large scale integration technology are used. And the speed of these computers is extremely high. This generation introduced machines with hundreds of processors that could all be working on different parts of a single program. Examples, we have desktop computers, we have laptops, we have notebooks, we have MacBooks, etc. These all are the computers which are we are using, we are using today. Advantages of fifth generation computers, these computers are smaller in size and it is more compatible. These computers are very powerful and cheaper in cost. It is obviously used for the general purpose. Higher technology is used. Development of true artificial intelligence. Advancement in parallel processing and superconductor technology. These are the advantages of fifth generation computers. Discussing the disadvantages of fifth generation computer, it tends to be sophisticated and complex tools. See, the complexity has increased. Okay, it has pushed the limit of transistor density. Yes, today the transistor that are being used are increasing in number day by day. So, these are the disadvantages of fifth generation computers. Now, coming to the components of computer system. See, computer systems we have computer hardware, we have computer software. What is computer hardware? Hardware refers to the physical components of a computer. Computer hardware is any part of the computer that we can touch these parts. These are the primary electronic devices used to build up the computer. Examples of hardware in a com computer are the processor, memory devices, monitor, printer, keyboard, mouse and CPU. See, we have hardware. See, all the circuitry, all the electronic equipments like resistors, capacitors, transistors, ICs, microprocessors. These are all the hardware. Motherboard, these are the hardware. Okay. A computer hardware where the basic circuitry is attached to the computer. Okay. Types of computer hardware like we have input devices we have output devices we have storage devices then we have internal component also so these are the types of the computer hardware that we have input devices are those devices through which a user enters data and information into the computer or simply user interacts with the computer examples of input devices are keyboard mouse scanner etc Output devices. Output devices are devices that are used to show the result of the task performed by the user. Examples of output devices are monitors, printers, speakers, etc. Storage devices. Storage devices are devices that are used for storing data and they are also known as secondary storage data. Examples of storage devices are CD, DVD, hard disk, etc. These are the storage devices. Internal component. Internal component consists of important hardware devices present in the system. Examples of internal components are the CPU, motherboard, etc. So these are the different types of the computer hardware that we have. Next is the computer software. What is a software? Software is a collection of instructions, procedures and documentation that performs different tasks on a computer system. We can say also computer software is a programming code executed on a computer processor. 
This code can be machine level code or code written for an operating system. See examples of software like MS Word, MS Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Google Chrome, Photoshop, MySQL. These are the computer softwares. Now we have two types of computer software. Number one, system software. Number two, application software. System software is a component of computer software that directly operates with computer hardware which has the work to control the computer's internal functioning and also takes responsibility for controlling hardware devices such as printers, storage devices, etc. Types of system software include operating system, language, language processors and device drivers. Application softwares. Application softwares are the software that works the basics operation of the computer. It performs a specific task for users. Application software basically includes word processors, spreadsheets, etc. Types of application software include general purpose software, customized software, etc. These are the application softwares. Now, if we look at the difference between hardware and software, we have several parameters based on which we have differentiated the hardware and software. Now, the first parameter is the basic definition. If you look at the basic definition of hardware, it is a physical part of the computer that causes the processing of data. If you look at the basic definition of software, software is a set of instructions that tells a computer exactly what to do. Next parameter is development. Hardware is manufactured, software is developed and engineered. Software is not manufactured, software is developed and engineered. If you look at dependency, hardware cannot perform any task without software. But the software cannot be executed also without hardware. Means hardware and software both are needed for a computer to work. Process of creating Electronic and other materials are used to create hardware, software created by utilizing a computer language to write instructions. Tangible and intangible parameter, hardware is tangible as a hardware is a physical electronic device that can be touched. But software, it is intangible as we can see and also use the software but we can't touch them. Durability. Hardware typically wears out over time, yes. But the software does not wear out with time. However, it may contain flaws and glitches. So these are the basic differences between the hardware and the software. The other uh, parameters we, we have like uh, we have classified the hardware as input devices, output devices, storage devices and internal components. And we have classified the software as system software and application software. Virus effect. Hardware is not affected by computer viruses and software is affected by computer viruses. Transfer parameter. Hardware cannot be transferred from one place to another electrically through the network. But software can be transferred via network means. Now only machine level language is known to be understood by the hardware. The program accepts, but in case of software, the program accepts human readable input, interprets it in machine level language and sends it to hardware for additional processing. If the hardware is damaged, it is replaced with a new one. But if the software is damaged, its backup copy can be reinstalled. Now, in terms of failure, dust, overheating, humidity and other factors are commonly responsible for hardware failures. For software, overloading, systematic error, major minor version error and other factors are commonly responsible for software failures. Examples of hardware are keyboard, mouse, monitor, printer, CPU, hard disk, RAM, ROM. And examples of uh, software, we have MS Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Photoshop, MySQL, etc. Now, what is humanware? Humanware is a hardware and software that emphasizes user capacity 
and empowerment and the design of the user interface. It is the man-machine interface. The personnel which are related to installation, maintenance, operation and testing of a computer are called human wear or live wire. So those people who are related to the installation, maintenance, operation and testing of computer are called human wear or live wire. Examples we have programmers, hardware or network engineers, system analysts etc. They are all human wear. Now what is firmware? Firmware is a software embedded in hardware. It is pre-written computer program in machine language that is permanently stored in the ROM or PROM. Generally, these are the booting mechanisms which help in the starting of a computer. Such programs cannot be erased or overwritten. Firmware is embedded into the hardware at the manufacturing time and it is not expected to change for the lifetime of the hardware device. In addition, the firmware is not lost when hardware loses power. Example, BIOS. BIOS is a firmware. Now, let's discuss the advantages of computer. See, a computer is, uh, has become an inseparable part of our daily lives. We have various advantages of the computer. Number one, Multitasking. Multitasking is one of the main advantages of computer. A person can do multiple tasks and multiple operations at the same time and calculate numerical problems within a few seconds. The computer can perform millions or trillions of work in one second. Speed. Now the computer is not just a calculating device. Nowadays, computer has a vital role in human life. One of the most advantages of computers is their incredible speed which helps humans to finish their task in a few seconds. Cost and stores huge. Amount of knowledge, it's a coffee cost solution. A person can save huge data within a coffee budget. A centralized database for storing information is a major advantage that will cost, that will reduce cost. Accuracy. One of the essential advantages of computer is they will perform not only calculations but also with accuracy. Protecting digital data is understood as data security. Task completer, compu computer completes tasks that might be impossible for humans to complete. Communication. The computer helps the user better understand and communicate with other devices. Productivity. The level of productivity gets automatically doubled as the computer can do the work very fast. Reduces workload. Information is often accessed by more than one person with the necessity for work to be duplicated. Computers can perform the same sort of work repeatedly without throwing up errors thanks to the tiredness or boredom which are quite common among humans. Storage. The PC has an inbuilt memory where it can store an outsized amount of knowledge. You can also store data in auxiliary storage devices. So these are the advantages of computer that we have today. Now computers also have some disadvantages. Number one, virus and hacking attacks. A virus is a community bomb. Worm and hacking is just unauthorized access over a computer for a few illicit purposes. Viruses can go to another system from email attachments, viewing an infected website advertisement through removable devices like USBs, etc. Online cyber crimes. Online cyber crime means computers and networks may have been utilized in order to commit a crime. Cyber stalking and fraud are the points that come under online crime cyber crimes. Reduction in employed opportunity. Mainly past generations hasn't used the PC or the need, the knowledge of computers. They have faced an enormous problem when computer came into the field. High cost is another disadvantage of computer. Computers are expensive. Even the four most affordable computers are still very expensive for the typical person in South Africa since computers empower people. Distractions and disruptions. If you have got 
ever spent hours browsing the web or watching videos on YouTube, then you can recognize how distracting computers can be because of their high entertainment value. Next is it increases waste and com impacts the environment. With the speed at that computer and other electronics get replaced, all of the old devices that get thrown away have a big impact on the environment. Health problem. Prolonged use of computers can lead to various health hazards. Too much sitting near the screen results in eye strain and drying up of the eyes. Also prolonged sitting leads to neck and back problems. So these are the several disadvantages of computers. So students, today we will we have completed the module 1 of the essentials of IT. See you in the next class for the next topic for the module 2. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much.